Six months ago, the Baltimore Ravens raised the Lombardi Trophy in triumph. And the Ravens are the champions of the world. Hallelujah! The long road to a second championship begins now. Old pros and raw rookies alike have headed to Westminster, Maryland and the Ravens training camp. That means hard work under the burning summer sun. Long days filled with tireless preparation. 83 men are competing for only 53 spots. This means that for some, camp will end in a dream fulfilled. For others, the dream will simply end. When you've got 80 guys, you'd like to get to know your players on a personal level, but you've got to prioritize your time and you look at a young man and you recognize, you know what, there's probably a pretty good chance this kid's not going to be with us. An NFL training camp is hard. For the 2001 Ravens, camp will be hard knocks. here for about 10 years and immediately fell in love with the serenity of it. I mean, you can go two, three days and not see another person and that kind of solitude and serenity is, is hard to find. The great thing about it is getting the quiet time to lay over in the hammock literally every afternoon. You can really just do just about anything you want to and it's with a family time that's hard to come by. Let's get it off. All right, pressure's on, Keegan. Let's see if you can perform under pressure. People will talk about being arrogant, egotistical, eccentric. I got a cover of Sports Illustrated here. <laughs> Says, Titans are the NFL's best team. And I joke about it saying, well, at least I'm consistently arrogant, egotistical, and eccentric. Maybe they are, <laughs> but not today. <laughs> but I don't think those are bad qualities, as long as you don't take them to excess. And that leads you to be self-absorbed, self-centered, very selfish. And the people that can only answer that are my family. He's not that way with us. You know, we have a wonderful group of friends that don't think that or they wouldn't continue to be around us. I mean, this is an example. We've been coming up here for 10 years with these people and they've never asked us to stay away because of Brian's arrogance. <laughs> we want everyone to like my dad. Um, so there's been lots of criticism this year and talk about the language that he uses in some of his heated moments. The uh, pundits and the experts are gonna pick this apart and talk to me about some kiss ass third down percentage or red zone, hey. Them all. <laughs> Put that in NFL films. Bleep it any way you want. Okay. At the same time, I know what kind of role model he is to people, and that's always my first concern: is oh gosh, you know, who saw that? And usually it's his mom, so we're okay, <laughs> and we can take care of Nana. <laughs> we end up doing is duplicating our facilities here in training camp for some 24 days. Basically we're pretty well packed now. The big stuff is out. The college that we're going to has some facilities but not enough for us and basically they pull their stuff out, we put our stuff in. It'll be tight, it'll be warm. There's no air conditioning in the training room and we're there 6.30 in the morning until probably 7.30 at night. It's very, very hot, and once the tape gets hot, the adhesive becomes a real pain to get off the roll. It slows us down, it just gets hard to work with, so that's the biggest thing we're concerned about. Ray Lewis, I'm going into my sixth year in the NFL, and I play linebacker. 
I'm getting a lot of stuff tore up uh, in my house. I'm remodeling uh, just to give it a more comfortable home feeling. This is my broken down house. Looking terrible as usual. Getting everything redone. Now it's relaxing. Now it's getting your mind away from football. The day you step on Westminster campus, which is where we train at, I turn back into the warrior, my gladiator. That's the mode I'm in the rest of the season. This is gonna be my steam room, you know, to sweat, get some good stuff out. And then this is gonna be my sauna, where we can sit down and relax and sweat. You come in here, you relax and just have fun. My passion is when a person speak about a linebacker, the first name come out their mouth is Ray Lewis. The way he changed the game, the way he played the game. When he stepped on the field, there was no question that he came to work every day. When people write about me, they write what they think they know. They think that I'm heartless. They think that I'm this gladiator at all times. I'm this warrior and that's the way I carry my life off the field and everywhere. It's not. Yeah, my heart is pure. I'm probably the most humblest person you'll ever know. I love kids. I love being around people. My piano is going to go over there. My organ is going to go over there. I'd love to play that a little bit. If there's anything going wrong, the first, the first person to jump up and say, you know what, nah, is me. I'm the peacemaker of almost anything, family, team-wise, whatever it is. This is the picture, of course, from the Super Bowl when I was warming up right here. And then this is after we won the game. This is a great portrait, and I love it to death. But this is in my living room, but that's probably going to be gone in a minute because I'm going to cut that wall out anyway. There, I actually threw like tearing up stuff right now. It should go pretty quick, and I'll be in camp, so I'll be away from it all, so when I come back, it'll be done. We take over the fields in uh, mid-May from the college, and then we'll uh, be up here five, six, seven days a week, more time as the camp gets closer, of course. We're just trying to get it as best we can, as perfect as we can for the team. The guys will tell you around here, that is my pet feet. I ride them more about the fields than any single thing in this organization. As you can see going around here, we got irrigation going right now and trying to get this Bermuda grass to really get strong and tight for Monday's opening practice. We've created a constant dialogue where he is telling me down to the minute what he's doing with those fields. Are they covered? Are they not covered? What field's good? What isn't? Should we be on a field? Can we let a field rest? This can affect the players more than anything else we do, the pounding they take on that field. It's a never-ending battle of trying to keep the fields in shape. Uh, we're going in through a mini drought up here at Western Maryland College. We haven't had measurable rain here in, uh, I'd say, three, maybe three and a half weeks. So everything's burning up all around us, but we brought this Bermuda grass sod in and uh, it just loves this heat and it's high sunshine. So as we go along with practices, it should get stronger. And of course, practice starts at 8.45 a.m. on Monday and uh, we'll see how much, how strong these fields really are. <laughs> Vince knows nothing's gonna set me off more than the fields not being right. My name is Dwayne Missouri, defensive end, seventh round draft pick from Northwestern University. Somebody's looking at my highlight package, they're going to see aggressive pass rush. They're going to see somebody who likes to have fun. They're going to see somebody probably talking a little smack every now and then. Everything that I did here is going to stay in that stadium when I leave. I can't take anything that happened on that field or any other Big Ten field with me. Nobody's going to walk you through life with your hand held saying, okay, now we're going to do this, now we're going to lift that. You just have to prepare yourself. You have to know what you have to do as a player. Dwayne's interesting. Dwayne's a very intelligent athlete, and that uh, you wouldn't naturally associate those attributes to a defensive lineman. I'm going to catch some heat over that. The thought of not making it, you have to think about it. You have to be prepared for it. Purple and black, fool. Just like them ravens. <laughs> to become a raven would mean a completion of one of my goals to make an NFL roster. Concerns would be not making a team, moving all of my stuff out there and pretty much trying to set up my life out there and not realizing the dream that I've set forth to do. I know I can play. I know I'm gonna make plays. I know I'm gonna get out there and do my absolute best. If my best isn't good enough, then so be it. But <clears throat> I know I went out with everything I had. I'm here, I'm in for the long haul. You know, obviously I haven't gone through camp yet, I'm sure, you know, once you're actually competing for a job, very cutthroat. Seventh round draft push? 
cut. If he's a rookie, I don't want to know who he is. When we came in for minicamp and everything, the guys, they're just open. They're just real guys. Nobody ever gave me anything. When I came into this league, I got a $1,000 sign-up bonus. Not $12 million, not $5 million, not 400000 you look at all these guys uh, drafted first round, uh, all this, all that. They're going to come in with their nice cars. Don't park them near me because I'm going to slam my door open and you're going to have dents all on the side of your car. All right, I have no respect for you until you make the team. And then once you make the team, then, you know, I might talk to you or something. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. He'll get ripped apart. If there's a camera following a rookie around, he's going to get tore. If you survive, then we'll talk. I'm a big believer that the training camp mentality, that Spartan atmosphere, that rarefied atmosphere, the bonding atmosphere of being together under adverse circumstances, of being forced to eat meals together, that when you do have some time alone to, for you and a buddy to go and have a beer and relax a little bit, that bonding effect, I think that's a big part of a team. My name is Todd Heap, I'm tight end, first round draft pick, Baltimore Ravens. I can make plays, make things happen when you need it the most, third downs. I'm not afraid to uh, call for the ball or be the guy that needs to make the play in that situation. Ron looping, end zone, touchdown Todd Heap, the golden retriever. Todd comes in with a little different challenge in that since he is the number one draft choice, there's a pretty good chance he's going to make this club. So the challenge for him clearly becomes, how can I contribute this year? I still don't think of myself as the first round draft pick in the NFL. I, I just, I'm just a normal guy just walking around. It's still awkward for me to, to sign autographs. You know, it's part of the deal and I love doing it, especially for the kids. All right, buddy. You really feel you like a, your guy inside sure. of the, gla the glass wall and everybody's looking in at you. We're just normal people here in the real world. It's probably more than she bargained for. She'll have to get used to it. Everybody thinks you're Britney Spears. Well, we got married last Saturday. We had to do something, go on a honeymoon or do something, uh, but we made it short and quick. We made it just a little trip to uh, California. We've been living in Arizona with our families for our whole lives, and to just go change that, and it happened all of a sudden, and you leave one day and you're gone, that, that's a big change. It's real difficult saying goodbye. Uh, I really tried not to be emotional about it, and, and Ashley was the same way, and she tried not to be emotional. It kind of overwhelmed her, but, uh, you know, it's all new. <laughs> For the next 10 days, we'll be doing a lot of fun things that uh, a lot of the newlywed couples get to do. <laughs> We're home! <laughs> For me, I think we'll pass the time getting my mind off things. This is our first time seeing the new house. I did good, huh, Ashley? You did good. This, this, is, this is my spot right here. My barbecue will be out here. Great view, you like that? Nice trees. You don't see many of these in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> Tristy probably needs to be turned on. He probably has to take care of that. Don't have a bed, don't have couches, TVs any of the things you need for, for to live and get by every day. You like this one? <laughs> Probably be right there, right where we're standing. Yeah. It's gonna be a long, hard season, so hopefully we'll be able to have some place to come home See? and sit That's down and relax good. and just make it a comfortable, cozy place yeah. to live. Yeah. Give us a week, it'll nice. be full. <laughs> These workouts are supposed to start at 10 o'clock. It is 10 o'clock. I'm the only one here. See, I have to get here early. I have to warm up to warm up. Now, we're going to do 20 minutes of warming up before we get to anything. But I got to warm up to warm up. You know what? My thing is, I always say, as long as they're on the other team, I don't care what time they show up, I'll be here. Look at all the high school kids over there. When I was 10, I had a summer job. I had to buy school clothes little kids over there. Now they're doing exactly what I'm doing now. What well, most of they got tight. <laughs> they started school in August now. When I went to school, we started after Labor Day. They should. They should go year round. As bad as kids have gotten now, they should get two days, they should get two days for Christmas, two days for uh, Thanksgiving, go to school. No, nah, don't do that. Why? It'll be more crime then because no, they'll start skipping. No, nah, it's just when they out, it's just when they out of school to have to think about. Uh, they parents need to whoop their ass. That's, that's well, I agree with that too. <laughs> That'll cure a lot of things. I don't abuse my kids, but if they mess up, I'm whooping their ass. 
my son, he want tattoos. He want his hair like Allen Iverson. I said, you better have Allen Iverson to pay some of these bills. Because as long as I'm paying these bills, How many more days? Nine uh, more. Nine more days. Prison. You know, at this point in my career, I'm debating whether to go or not. If you don't know how to go and get prepared for a season, you shouldn't be in the NFL. How you doing? Take Some peanuts, man. Hook me up. All right, let's see. Right, let's go much. I don't know. I, look like I start getting miserable. After July 4th, I just, you know, my wife hates me. My kids are like, Daddy, you're mean. I'm gonna pet him, get pet him. Ah! I'm willing. <laughs> this is how you get all your frustrations out before you go into camp. You know, they should have camp at like a nice spa. We can get a nice rub down, a little pool action, you know, something like that. Make it fun. Are you I gotta leave all this, man. There you go, the new singular phone. Now, these two phones can communicate between each other with text messaging too. Oh, you okay. could send her a little message, I love you, and she could send one back, I love you more or something. <laughs> so um, that's kind of cool. You are silly. He needs a diaper change. <coughs> Toxic fumes! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kadri Ismail. I'm a third year uh, receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, but this is my ninth year in the NFL. I'll do whatever I need to do to be successful. And if it means that I have to eat right and forsake something that it looks pleasurable to the eye, so be it. I've had so many diets and eating programs and all kind of stuff. And this one, actually eating foods that work well for you. Organic cage-free eggs. Uh, you smell that? I don't smell it either. No hormones? Nothing but straight health. Fresh potato. Homemade butter. Fresh squeeze. Oh, yeah. No additives, no preservatives, no fresh. Organic. See this. It's called real meat. Look at this. Unbelievable. <sighs> I'm in heaven. All right, class, today we're going to learn about basketball. Who could tell me the five different positions on the basketball court? My name is Kenny Jackson. I'm a free agent taken by the Baltimore Ravens, and I play outside linebacker. Kenny's a unique story. Uh, in that he doesn't have a lot of football experience per se, that he's been out of it for a while. Every team has a power forward, every team has a small forward, every team has a center, right? University of Nevada, Reno, my performance, it was, it was subpar. My uh, senior year, I was injured. Junior year, I had a pretty decent season, but I never played to the best of my abilities, ever, in college, I don't think. He said he went to college and things didn't go as well as he thought, so he needed to have another career, and he thought that teaching would be it. Your point guard is going to be at the top of the court. He's directing traffic. He's telling everybody where to go, right? The Echo Multipurpose Center is a special education school with students who have learning handicap and behavior disorder. It's a pretty tough school, yeah. When the kids come in in the morning, they usually check their bags, you know, check out for guns, weapons, all that stuff. It's important for the center not to stay in the key longer than three seconds. If he stays in the key longer than three seconds, it's a three second violation. Shoot. I think I made like 13 bucks an hour, around 13, maybe 13.50. He would work out. He would run. You know, he just wouldn't give up. He was determined that he was going to play pro ball, and he would tell me that. I knew I wanted to play professional football, but I didn't know the means of playing until my brother, Barry, helped me out. And uh, he was telling me that he knew a coach, Marvin Lewis, that coached him in college, that's coaching in the NFL. Keep coming after him. What's that frown for? Got the damn smile on your face. Let's go. First of all, I don't even know what team Coach Lewis coaches for, so I'm searching through the teams. Looked under the Ravens and I seen Coach Marvin Lewis. I made maybe two or three phone calls. Marvin Lewis never called me back. So then Ken started write, writing him. I'm not thinking these letters are actually getting to him. I don't know how it works. And I was driving home from work, you know, kind of nonchalant. My brother called me on my cell phone. I was like, man, you better get up to Long Beach City College. Coach Marvin Lewis is going to be there. I'm like, what? 
I didn't even have a pair of shorts in my car at the time. Thank God I had my cleats in my trunk. I haven't ran 40 probably in about a good two months. He ran in the uh, uh, four six fives, and then with against the wind four six eight. I was really impressed, uh, you know, with those times for a guy who's jumping out of his car after being at work all day and not training to prepare to do this. Our little deal was if he if he made the team that he would buy me a brand new Corvette. <laughs> that was the deal. This truly was somebody who just wanted an opportunity. Many, many times people say, oh, I just want a chance. But then it's, you know, well, what am I going to get? What am I going to make? What am I going to do this? And, and so forth. And so it was kind of refreshing just to have somebody who just truly wanted an opportunity to get to an NFL camp and have a chance to compete for a roster spot. Back on the buildup. Ankles caught. Keep them close to the ground as you get started. Small steps. Open it up. Nice job. There you go. Good. That's it, Shannon, right there. Good rotations right there, good job. At 33 now, it takes me longer to get in shape than it did at 24, 25. A lot of people invest in a lot of different things. I invest in my body. I spend a lot of money on this program in the off season to make sure that I'm ready to go play uh, come football season. You know, when I came out, none of this existed. Uh, and it's amazing where football is going to. It's, it's going to a year-round thing. Guys are not start, starting to train like track athletes. So now all of a sudden, football players, normally big, bulky guys that, that want power, all of a sudden they want to get fast, they want to get streamlined because all this benefits us on the field. Man, the people see that, they think I got some in me or something. Shit. Yeah. Five more minutes, mommy. Shannon is a consummate professional. He prepares as well as anybody I've ever been around with regards to the way he keeps himself in shape year round his attention to detail and routine in every situation. He's very uh, focused on what that routine is. He doesn't like things being out of routine. He likes to know what the structure is. He likes to know where things are gonna be. Hey, I want y'all to know, every day after he get done, he haul ass, now today he gonna do some legs. I normally do abs, though, don't you forget the abs. He do two sets of abs, then he go home, go to the ab class, now today he wanna stay over here. Take your ass home. All right. You can count on two things. Him showing up because he has to be me because I enjoy <laughs> John, Mari Noon, bro. Appreciate it. Well, Redman is complaining of some soreness in his left shoulder. He says his golf game is bothering it. There are so many things that our support people have to do to make sure that life is easy, as easy as you can make it for the players. It's affected some of his strength. Let me take a look at it, and if there, uh, we may uh, make a dynamic duel over there to see you. You want the players to be as comfortable as possible so that they can give their best effort on the field so that you can quantify just how good they are and how they're going to help this football team. The thing that we tell our players is we're here to help you. Whether you make this team or not is on your skills. Feel a little something feel, soreness yeah, yeah, in there, okay? A little bit. It's probably related to you changing your golf swing a little bit because what happens is when that final cut down day comes, we want the best 53 players on the field. That's the ones that are going to make us money. Hello, I'm Reggie Waddell. I'm a free agent for the Baltimore Ravens. My greatest fear probably would be me letting myself down. Am I going to be able to handle the cameras? <laughs> you know, it's going to be. It's, this is totally new for me, you know. I never had the cameras all up in my face before, and this is gonna be an experience for me. What's up, what's up, fellas? Ladies, go here and check out a couple of clothes, see what they got on a new market today. How you doing, sir? Gotta look good for the crowd. Gotta look good. Always. We want you there. The only thing I can say I treated myself to is, whoa. Not really too much. <laughs> I've been mainly just spending time with my family and my fiance, Shy. Because I know once football starts, I won't be able to see any of them. I think his chances are great because Reggie has a very good work ethic and he's very determined. I mean, when he has something set in his mind to do, he's gonna do it. Oh, yeah. Whether he makes it or not, you know, he's still gonna be Reggie. That's why you gotta hit the barbershop up, especially Lil T's. Oh yeah, nice and neat. You know it. I believe my chances are really good. I don't believe that they're that type of organization to bring someone in just for to fill up their roster. 
they're going to give you the opportunity to make the team. Yeah, it's tight right here. And yep, I know I look good. The first thing I want to do is make the team. Second thing I want to do is become a starter. And my third goal is to become a Pro Bowl. And then after that, hopefully in the future, they be like, we want to put Reggie Waddell in the Hall of Fame. Uh, if I don't make the Ravens, uh, I would be very disappointed. I'd be hurt. But since I graduated from college, I have a degree yeah, in sports management. I will have something to fall back on. Hey, Kadri. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, buddy. What you got? Huh? Say hello. Hey, my love. What you doing? I think training camp is the hardest part because uh, you are saying goodbye. That's the part that it gets me a little bit worn mentally. I've been blessed with arguably the, the best woman that ever walked the face of the earth. Yeah, I'd like him to be able to concentrate on what he has to do and not, not worry about what's going on here at home. Of course, he always asks, you know, but. Thanks, love. He went from playing for four years in Minnesota to Green Bay, to Miami, to New Orleans, and then to Baltimore. Gosh, we must have moved so many times, different places, whether it be in a, a small, tiny apartment to a large rental home. For the children, anyway, this is all they know. I mean, they were born into this, and they just know every six months we're going somewhere new. And I think they actually really enjoy it. Who does Daddy play for? Uh, the Ravens. <laughs> That's right. Kaiju, who does Daddy play for? What? What team does he play? The Ravens. I told him. You did. What we did this time was to buy a home up in Baltimore. But in the in the interim, there's going to be some uh, change as far as just getting everything settled down. Well, here's our home as a shell of it anyway. And one of the tougher things about going off the camp, kind of appreciate the fact that I'm able to stay at a teammate's house, but you also want to come in and just break in your house and settle everything in so you can come home from the day and chill out. You know, I'm trying to get as much done as I can now, and then that way Holly can uh, have at it with, you know, her thing. So, good ears crying, and therefore it's time for Dad to go. <laughs> yes, indeedy. My name is Ortiz Jenkins. I'm a rookie quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, wearing number nine. I love my community. I love, you know, the city of Long Beach, North Long Beach, where I grew up at. And that's why, you know, I can go around this area and you see, you know, people respect me because I give out great respect to them. In every neighborhood like this, because these are what they call ghettos, I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. You got to have cars that don't work. See that car over there? Right there, the white car, the car don't work. But you, in every ghetto, you have one. You're going to have it in the yard, and it don't work. I promise you. But that's in every ghetto, every one. You got cars that don't work. You got dogs in the streets running around, and you got grass that needs to be cut. And that's Long Beach, Jordan High School. My dreams came true right in this, in this city right here. So if it can be done here, it can be done anywhere. See, when it's all over, I plan on coming back right here and coaching. This is what I love, and I, you know, I, I talk about it. I talk about, you know, the cars and the grass not being green, but this is me, and this is where I'm from, and this is what I love. You gotta love where you're from. This is my roots. This is the core of what I am. But you know, this is how we do it. We just kicking and chill, hanging, listening to the music, eating, talking about old times. See, this is my mom, though. See, I don't know if we introduced her first, but come here, because she got a shirt on. Let me show you them shirts. See, this is the Ortiz Jenkins, the first annual Ortiz Jenkins football camp in Palm Springs, California. But this is the motor. This is the fuel to my motor that keeps me going. This is the lady that kept my head straight because, you know, growing up in these streets out here is not as, as easy as people think it is. I'm showing you this, this social side of me. It's going to be two different sides when you get to camp and you see me out there stressing. I've never been, you know, cut from a team. I always played at Arizona, played four years, had, a, you know, a good career, but now it's a little different. Everything steps up now. One of the first things I did was I went and I bought him a Bible. <laughs> and I gave him a, a particular scripture. And it's a, a scripture that gives encouragement. Should something uh, go different this particular round, this is not the end. I mean, this is a beginning. And it's not all he's about. 
It's not like a, a down day. I think it's a happy time for me. It's an exciting time for me. It's a challenge for me. Because a lot of people don't believe that I can do this. You see, I don't think that way about myself at all. Fortunately for us as players, we picked a profession and we made it. But we still have to do everything else that everybody else does in their, in their lives. This morning I got up, I cooked breakfast, you know, some scrambled eggs with cheese and sausage. And, you know, I got to change diapers. I got to bathe my kids. I got to brush my kids' teeth. I got to put them to bed. I got to give my girl a bottle. And we have five kids, so we're always busy. Our other teams are in camp five weeks, six weeks still. In our training camp, we're only in camp for about three and a half weeks or so. And uh, that makes it a little easier for me and my family. But it's only going to last a couple more years. And then I'm an old fogey. I'm going to be getting out of the game pretty soon. The vacationing part is over. Now it's headed to training camp. It's time to go to work. Off to camp. Ready to get down? Start working, having some fun, because this is the life. My mind is going to be all over the place, I'm sure, going down there, um, running through the whole gamut of emotions, nervousness, excitedness, anxiousness, everything. I mean, happy, joy, sad to leave this place. I'm definitely going to go through it all. Yeah. Well, it's real difficult saying goodbye. Uh, I really tried not to be emotional about it. I'll miss my, my parents. My, my little brothers, my sisters. Excited? Huh? All right, I'll see you. All right, I'll see you. All right. After the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 Works for me. <laughs> Time to get on. Attention to the terminal. The request is KJ or TG Jenkins. Mortigi, could you please come to the American ticket counter? Mortigi? <laughs> My name become Mortigi. <laughs> the worst is, you know, I'm just thinking the whole time. You know, they put a movie on, I can't really get focused into the movie, and I'm just thinking about coverages and what I got to do and different assignments in this defense, and it's, it's really tough. Once you get on top of the hill, everybody's going to be shooting for you. So now we're heading back to camp. I'm heading back to camp as world champions. Now everybody's shooting at us right now. We love it. Uh, so it's going to be fun. I get to go back and hang out with all the guys again. Me, Shannon, and Rod get to do our thing again. I know for the next six weeks, it's going to be an emotional time. Throughout camp, you're going to see guys getting cut. You're going to see guys getting hurt, injured. I mean, everything. So I'm going to try and keep my emotions under, con or under control for the most part, because I know once camp comes, I'm going to go through a whole lot of stuff mentally. Hoping and praying everything go right on this drive. Instead of driving and being miserable for three hours on the drive, I could be there in 50 minutes, 45 minutes, and just be miserable for the 45 and like have my mind occupied on like, like what's below me, you know? I mean, it's fun. I sort of have to gear myself back into the football mode. It's definitely a, a, a pain in the ass, man. It really is a pain in the ass. He's right to a certain degree. We don't need it, but yeah, Tony needs it. <laughs> so I'm away from my home for a while, going out to this sorry hotel that we stay at. Oh gosh, it's out there with nothing, is that? I think training camp is the hardest part because uh, you are saying goodbye. It is a rarefied atmosphere. I'm not going home after practice. Of when I'm going back to my room. Can I give this to Bucky, who's a huge Notre Dame fan. One of the drivers. But I'm not, I didn't go for Notre Dame, no. Oh, did you? Well, he's still a Ravens fan. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go. Well, that's your brother, then. Yeah. That's great. West Miss is a real calm place. It's a very relaxing place. Great place to have a uh, camp. I think that's why they put training camp so far out to where there's nothing at. So you really can't focus on just football. They take you away um, from the confines of your own home for a reason. They want you to get up there. They want your mind on football. Camp is not a lot of fun. It's arduous. It's physically demanding. It's time away from your family. It's something you'd rather not be doing, particularly for a veteran. But they also understand that there's a necessity. 
that they need to interact with those players and need that practice time with those players that maybe do need training camp. And if they do, how quickly can you mesh that young enthusiasm, that young wide-eyed innocence of, boy, what do I do now, with that sage experience of the veteran? It's almost like you're like in jail. I hate it. I hate the coaches. I hate the front office. I want to get back home. I, it's just miserable. I don't know. It sucks. Did you do this all yourself, all no. this marking and stuff? No. It's pretty good work. What can you say? After winning in at 232 with 4% body fat, I think I'm entitled to this. Okay. After losing 30 pounds in, uh, since April 28th, I'm good for one of these. Where'd you go to college? Uh, BYU. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, BYU. Why do guys go to BYU, man? Why do we go to BYU? You can't it's... have chicks in your rooms, the door, you gotta have both feet on the floor when you have a girl in your room, can't drink. What kind of, where, where do you go to college? You study, you actually study? Yeah. And look, you got your degree and you're an intern still. <laughs> there you go. It's the first Are you a Mormon? Day. Yeah. You gonna have one or more than one wife? No. Why not? Because some people don't do that. Wow. You got a big one? <laughs> Where's 106? Down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what room I'm in. What's the stairs at? Oh, the shuttle come back because I know the shuttles run through here a couple times. And I haven't seen going. a soul in here. Oh, this is Ashley. Hey, I'm Patrick. Hey, nice. Close knit quarters. It breeds camaraderie. And you might have a fight with a guy or a disagreement or argument with a guy on the football field, but that's far as it go. Once you get to the dorm, Hey, this is the guy that you know you would have to go to war with. You're gonna have enough of the enemies out there. You don't want one in your own ranks. My wife, how you doing? Ashley. Hi, hey. wife. Hi, Ashley. How you doing? Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. <laughs> When'd you get married? Two, Two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Hey. <laughs> Starting it off. Just in time. Yeah. 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 All right. This is room 120. Ammunition here. Ours is great because it's the best Westerners hotel, you know. So we have cable, we have air conditioning, we have phone, we have a little refrigerator put in there. So we have a good, we have a good. Well, most people do stay in dorms, but not, not in Baltimore, which I do like. It's amazing, though, the toys these guys have from cell phones to computers to laptop DVDs. Uh, you name it, they own it. Kinda had a PlayStation too, man. I don't know, I won't make it without it. And they find a way for every spare minute at camp to entertain themselves. I need an intern. For what? Keep my refrigerator stocked in my room. I'm gonna get this bed next to the window. Don't ask me why. I'm just gonna do it. This key, I need the, the I need to think stock like every day with water. Okay. And then I'll give you some more money for beer later on. Gotcha. All right? Sounds Keep good. it full. Okay. Nice ball. Sure. Goose. This is Brian. Hey, you gotta go weigh in. Yeah. Don't. Wherever you weigh in, you, you, you turn Friday down, man. You got. You gotta weigh in. Everybody weighs in. I don't believe in weigh-ins. I believe if you're not doing your job, fire them. Right. Some guys have different physiques. Good, right? Look good, though, don't I? Yeah, that's good, that's good. I mean, if I smell a hamburger, I gain two pounds, man. It's, like, ridiculous. You know, we have this chart above the scale, and you're supposed to weigh in and weigh out every day, like, to see how much you gain or lose. That's one of the rookies' jobs. Just fill in my spot, put whatever you want. Put 215, let's freak him out a little bit. <laughs> Lost 900 pounds today. Ridiculous. Weigh in or don't come to the <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Come on, who cares? But we got it for medical purposes. If you don't weigh in, Sam's not going to weigh in. Okay, just like, just like, uh, just like when you left last time. You know, we can't, we can't be doing that, right? Right? You kill, you're busting my chop. First meeting of the day. Let's see how it turns out. Last year, we faced the off-season trauma that we did. We overcame three-game losing streak, five games without scoring. 
We went through some very personal traumas. We know how to handle adversity. I don't give a second thought to what this group can do when we hit the bump in the road. The key now is, can you handle success? That's what's got me concerned. Expectations. We won a Super Bowl, men. There's 31 teams in the National Football League, okay? Every single team can do something more than they did last year except us. We're the only team that has a chance to repeat. We have one agenda. That's go to and win a Super Bowl. Now, make no mistake, no one, no one, make sure we're clear. Don't come back to me and say, well, it was just so, well, I thought no one, mother, father, agent, girlfriend, boyfriend, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> all right? The guy that cuts your hair, the guy that's giving you a suit, the guy that's delivering the car, nobody is in your room, and I don't want them in the halls. Uh, you want to be treated like men? Act like men. The veterans understand that. We've won a Super Bowl doing that. I suggest you don't screw with that. We're not going to hide from the fact that we're world champions. Some people are afraid to be champions. They're afraid to stand up and say, you know what? We want to go do this again. Just in case they don't, they don't want to look foolish. Every team thinks of itself as, as family and as a team of destiny. The New York Giants can tell you that. They thought they were a team of destiny. Didn't turn out quite that way. Now the core is here, but we've got some new people. There are 83 players in this room. There's only going to be 53 of you when we get to the end. That's the nature of the business. But we don't know who those 53 are going to be. Now, one final thing. We've got to remember why we're here. You got the ring. For the most part, you got the money. You've got to remember why you're here, guys, and why you play this game, why you go through what you're going. We've got a hell of an opportunity, guys, to show the world in a way no other team has ever before what a world champion's about and how we go about going back and being a world champion and it starts with the meetings tonight all the way into practice tomorrow. Okay, 7 o'clock special teams. Fish, come here, sit over here. All right, Fish, listen. Here's what your job is going to be. You ready? You don't have to weigh in and weigh out every day. You're in charge of Rob Burnett and Tony Saragusa. All right? You just weigh us in every day, all right? And, and just come back down. Do me a favor, man. Will you give me a soda of Diet Pepsi? I don't need no more ice. Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. Come on. Thanks. I have absolutely no sympathy for rookies. They're getting paid for what they did in college, and they haven't done a thing in the NFL. Hey, Rook, Rook. Hey, number one. Come here. Hurry up. Get your military looking ass over here. Come here, Todd. Rob. Uh, Burnett. What's up? Hey, man, how much are you giving? Huh? How much you make? Five years, 6.1. Five years, 6.1 million? Hey, Ozzy, way to get him! Five years, you! Five year deal! <laughs> Who's your age? Fire him. Fire him. Out of here. You got ripped off, man. You got 6.1 million. What are you gonna buy, man? Get yeah. yourself a new tractor or something? Where do you live? Yeah. Hey, Brian! We, we have a little problem already, man. Come here. A man here got married two weeks ago. He just signed a deal for 6.1 million for five years. I mean, you guys screwed him. You just let the guy have a honeymoon, let him have his wife in the room? So you're, he's your agent now? Yeah, yeah. Get him a room down the street, I'll pay for it. He's still on his honeymoon, the poor kid. Listen, man, let me give you some advice. Your wife is very good looking, man, right? Very beautiful wife, very nice. Do not bring her around here. All right? Hey, make sure these are cleaned up, all right? Enjoy your dinner. Leave with me. You know, we mess around with the rookies a lot, you know, especially like around, you know, when they're going to eat or when they're doing stuff or, you know, when they just piss us off, we'll just have them like stand up and start telling us, you know, you know what, you, what round you were drafted, you know, how much your signing bonus was so we know if they're going to buy us dinner or what the, how, how much we're going to spend of their money. Y'all coming to the stage next is my understudy. <laughs> this is the guy that they brought in to replace Shannon Sharp. So without any further ado, let's put some hands together. Mr. Todd. Mr. Todd Heat. Mr. Todd Heat. Come on, Todd. Todd Heat from Arizona State. Uh, signing bonus, 2.3. Oh, wow! All these rookies come up and you know put their hands over. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, get kiss my ass, kid. Just shut up. Fight, team on down the field. Fight with your might till victory is ours. Yeah, none of them can sing. We haven't seen one guy yet that can sing anything good. Long bear colors wave over others. Sing it to the tune of pro. And the guys that don't, 
usually get tied up and get thrown in a cold tub. Sports hell, 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 gang's all here. Hey, we all get this man up this cold tub, cold tub, cold tub, cold tub, cold tub. Cold tub. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody up? We got Wubbo? Say something everybody knows so they can help you out. Say some Neil Diamond or some Elton John or something. Good old Baylor Lang. Sometimes I love her. But I was caught up in physical attraction. But to my satisfaction, all that I own, you've been so good to me. my destiny. I meet my destiny tomorrow and just to go out there and give them everything I got. And I'm thinking, I'm nervous, I'm terrified, but at the same time that's going to build me up and I'm going to play with some nervous energy, which is good. Tomorrow morning, it's time to rock and roll. Can't wait. Can't wait. I mean, this, would, this is your life. I hope to spend my first night knocked out and getting ready for the long day ahead. I'd like to say, you know, it'll be an easy sleep, but I doubt it will. I've been through so much, I didn't get drafted. I went as a free agent. So this, to me, it's a challenge, but it's a reality about it. If you fail here, you just got to get back up and start over again somewhere else. You know, as a little kid growing up, this is what I dreamed about. I didn't made it. Now I just got to prove that I belong on this level. Just can't wait till tomorrow. The very first practice, there's really not a lot of, of pure X's and O's or even coaching going. It's just making sure everything in its right place as a starting point. We'll get you afterwards, guys. All right, here we go. Here we go. When that first horn blows. All right, we got to have it now. We got to have it now. That means a routine begins that's unrelenting. Get a good one now. Start it right. Start it right. What makes the first practice so special is that it's the anxiety. This is your very first practice. This is what you've been leading up to. I mean, this is what you spent your entire offseason for. Uh, you're anxious to get back. You're anxious to make a very good impression on your teammates. You're very anxious to make a very good impression on your coaching staff. You say, okay, yeah, I'm ready to go play. I'm ready to do whatever it's going to take for us to win. But in that, you also have to be under control. You can't let your emotions run wild because you'll drop a pass, you'll miss an assignment, you'll miss a tackle. That's going to be the biggest thing because guys are going to be anxious. Guys are going to be ready to go, uh, to go out there and go full throttle. And and you know Brian's going to say, "Hey, this is the first of many practices. So hey, guys, let's have fun, but let's be smart about it." Don't hurt him early. Don't hurt him early. Don't hurt him early. Camp is more mental than physical. I think you know just you know learning. You know, one day they put in five plays, the next day they'll put in another five, the next day they'll put in ten plays. Before you know it, you're just so overloaded, you're just like, I can't remember, you can't remember anything. And you gotta really be mentally prepared, or else you're just gonna be a number and you're gonna find yourself at home. First day, gotta get ready, get your mind right. The biggest thing for me was just putting on that helmet. Hopefully, I'll be able to show them and help the team this year. See, you're learning, Todd, outside already. I like that. It's still the same game. It's still football. It's not, it's not anything new or spectacular. It's just that the players are. If you don't go into this situation full-hearted, you're not going to make it. You have to give everything you got. The chances of me making the active roster are good. I see myself playing. I see myself on this roster. The thought of not making it, you have to think about it. You have to be prepared for it. You know, four or six weeks or whatever, they could be saying, you know, good luck to you. You're going to feel nervous, just like all the other free agents and rookies are going to feel extremely nervous. In order to earn respect for them, I have to do it on the field. Don't go out there and make a lot of mistakes. Just stay focused. Whether I'll get knocked down, I think I'm kind of got to get right back up. And that's all my whole life has been, you know, been knocked down and just got to get back up. I'm going to tear his ass up. He lunged. He lunged. He lunged. He lunged. Hey, this right here going to lunge. When I step on the field, I believe I can get better in every aspect of my game. I don't want to be in the same sentence as he was one of the best. My passion is when a person speak about a linebacker, the first name come out their mouth is Ray Lewis. I think uh, as the older you get, you don't work harder, you work smarter. You don't necessarily get the butterflies, maybe say a first or second year guy, 
But uh, the excitement level that's there, you know, to compete. Now I want to see what I can do. I, I want to make sure I can compete against this guy, and, and I feel confident I'm going to win. Ball, 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 Corey! I'm confident that I'm going to do well, so I don't even need to play book. He'll say a defense, and I know the defense. Or, or Wydell's not going to do that. You know, he's still trying to figure it all out, trying to figure out where he belongs in his whole scheme of things, if he belongs at all. I think he might have the confidence somewhere, but it might be on that borderline right now. If you sit there and think about it, that's when you start making mistakes. Right. None of this ever came. None of that ever came. You hit it with a straight back. You never bite your ass in. My greatest fear, me letting myself down. Because if I don't believe in myself, no one else will. I'm going to give it all I have. I'm going to have fun while I'm doing it. This is what I was dreaming for. It's in reach. All I have to do is just grab it now. My greatest fear going to camp is to is for the team and the people that evaluate me to not really be able to see the type of player that I really am. Next one. I ain't never been nervous like this. I ain't never been nervous like this. I ain't never been nervous like this. You're a man. You gotta kill a few worms a day tomorrow and then, you know, come up out of it. The worms need balls too, they need to catch them up. <laughs> Laugh it off, man. If I don't relax, you're not going to get the real Ortiz Jenkins as a quarterback. And so those, that's my biggest, one of my biggest fears is just being able to get out there and relax. And I want people to know, to be able to see me at my best. To me, it looks like you're thinking just, too much about it. Just, you've got a great arm, step back and throw the ball. Put it on people. Don't, don't think about being perfect. Because when any, any time a quarterback starts thinking, i got to be perfect, something in his mechanism changes, and you tighten up a little bit. Just stand back there and throw the thing. But whether it's pat and go, Starts individual, right and you shouldn't be missing guys in pat and go, okay? So just start relax and cut the ball loose. Don't worry about it. All right. Thanks. I'll relax. It's going to get active. Thinking too much. That practice is all about recognizing the task ahead. How are these individuals all going to come together as a team? How are we going to get all this covered? And once you get past that first practice, then you begin to get into that routine, and all of a sudden with each practice, you begin to see this kid's going to be okay. Yep, those relationships are starting. And all of a sudden what seemed like just an overwhelming set of circumstances and how are we going to come together to be a team, things start to come together. And it's sort of like a junkie. Man, I want it. I want to win. I want to put it in everybody's face again. I want to get to the Super Bowl. If we don't win the Super Bowl, this, this year's a failure for me and for the teammates and for the organization. I mean, you know, we, we, we want it again.